No stranger to the show. Geraldine Barry is back with us. Geraldine Barry and Associates. She's a former founder and president of SJREI and Association. And I want to pick Geraldine's brain a little bit about real estate because she's an expert. Welcome in. Hi, Joe. Good nice to, have to you. be here. I was lucky enough to have some mentors that mm-hmm. helped me and kind of guided me, but I was always willing to work hard and I dealt with people with integrity. If Mm -hmm. I knew what they wanted, my goal was to give them exactly that or Mm -hmm. help them to clarify what their needs were. And I found that treating people with dignity and kindness Mm -hmm. worked very well. And my mother had said to me years ago, you should go into real estate in America. Now, this was before (laughs) she'd ever been to America, mind you. (laughs) And she said, you have the personality for it. And I'm just like, I don't think that's for me. But then... I did end up being in real estate. And so after that company, I was working with a client who Mm -hmm. was 30 years old. And he said, I'm actually getting ready to retire. And I'm like, hello, (laughs) what happened? How are you doing that? Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are following us on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. We continue to grow that audience. We have a very special show for you today. I had announced it a couple of days ago, I believe. But uh, So I have to apologize in advance if I sound a little different or maybe less energy or my voice is a little bit different because we're doing this show today with uh, heavy hearts. In memory of Geraldine Barry, for those that are, again, watching the show now, on Facebook, and you know or you know what I mean, and um, and those that download the podcast later and listen to the podcast, I'm sure, number one, for those that know her, you know, we're going to pass on some more information on where you could help and some different things you could do as well, but mainly this show is really a dedication and a memory of Geraldine Barry, our very good friend that most of us knew for many, many years, and so this is just one thing that uh, we wanted to try to do in her memory, and so um, that could be some lasting voice of some people that loved her and cared for her, and so that's what we're going to do today, and that's the dedication. So anybody, first of all, I guess uh, in studio today with me is Lori Graymon, a friend of mine and a great friend of Geraldine Barry, so welcome in, Lori. Thank you, Joe. Good to have you here today, and I'm glad that uh, I know that you'll have a lot to share and uh, probably feel the same way. It's, It's difficult even being here in this position, it's hard to believe, but I guess we have to try to do the best we can to give as much back as her memory as we can. And that's, you know, that's when you mentioned that you were doing this. I felt like it was really a great idea, and I wanted to be here to share what we remember about her and right. how great she was, so that her legacy lives on. Right. Yeah, thank you for being here. We also have Jeff Hare on the line, great, great friend of ours, and Geraldine Barry knew her for years, and he's going to share some of his memories and thoughts about Geraldine. So, Jeff, welcome in, and thanks for spending some time with us today as well. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, the point is we three of us met because of Geraldine. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. So just let's talk a little bit first, you guys, about Geraldine as a person. We could certainly get into the business part, and Lori will share a lot about that, and Jeff and all of us have that. But, you know, let's talk first about the person. I met Geraldine about 10 years ago, and she is one of these people that when you initially meet, there are some people that automatically have this glow about them and this connection. Certainly her accent didn't hurt that at all, being Irish, but, you know, she engaged. She made eye contact. You felt like you were welcome and when she met you for the first time. And, you know, saying this stuff, it's interesting. Some people will say, well, isn't that normal? No, it's not. Not for a lot of people, it's not. No, not especially, you know, we live in Silicon Valley and Mm -hmm. there's a lot of technical engineers and they're a little more reserved. And so I met Geraldine in 2000 or around 2002 maybe. And 
you know, I told her I was doing development in Texas, and the first thing she did is she grabbed me by the arm, and she took me and introduced me to Richard Smith <laughs> and, and Bill Mignot and Tom Wilson, and these are people that are all about Texas, and, you know, she was just all about connecting, and mm-hmm. that was her, and everything was just with zest and passion. There was just so much passion, even if you looked in the photos, you know, last night we were at her vigil, and mm-hmm. the photos, you can just even see the sparkle in her right. eye. There was just such a light Yeah. No, it's you. It's very true, and we'll talk a lot about this too. You just made mention, and I think that was really clear to her. One of her gifts, and one of the things that came very normal, is she wanted to help other people. Like the fact that she grabbed your arm, she used to ask me, "What can I do to help? I want to introduce you." That was her big thing, right? I, want, I have some people. She'd get excited. I want yeah. some people. I want to come here. I want. I, I want you to meet so and so. What are your thoughts, Jeff, about in terms when you just met Geraldine? Well, actually, it's quite funny. This is about 12, 13, 14 years ago. We were in the middle of that horrible recession and Mm -hmm. the housing crisis, and uh, some of us who had been out doing some educational things, trying to figure out how to help people get through it and finding ways to do it. And um, I kept hearing about, you got to meet Geraldine. you got to meet, go to Geraldine's (laughs) Club, I think is the way it was put. And there were several real estate clubs around the Bay Area, and uh, as a result of some other people that I had met, I was going to a couple of these, listening in, and then uh, everybody said, i got to meet Geraldine, you have to meet Geraldine. So finally, I, I arrived at one of the meetups, and uh, somebody came in, and it was really just a horribly bad time. Geraldine was totally distracted by something else. Somebody tried to introduce me to her, and she just said, fine, and walked by. And it was about the coldest reception I ever could imagine. But I didn't give up. I just said, well, okay, that was not a good time. And, uh, you know, it was just 180 degrees away from the person I came Mm -hmm. to know. But she definitely was trying to do it. She was – Malcolm Tidwell writes in Tipping Point about connectors, you know, people Mm -hmm. that connect other people. And she had a gift for bringing out things and people. And we saw this as she developed her interview style. She got in there, and she had a way of interviewing people, and Alan Plinell and and Larry Stone and others. So she would just sit down and interview, and you got some interesting sidelight about those people you wouldn't get from anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a gift she had for really introducing you to people and and finding something about that person that was so important. Yeah. Well said. She did a great job on all those aspects, and there's so much to talk about her business and acumen there, but... You know, sticking to the theme about her as a person, she was always giving back. She was always spending time with organizations. And, you know, let's talk for a couple minutes because one of the things that I want her children, and I know all of us want her children to know how much she absolutely loved these children, and she lived for them every day. And, you know, as much as she glowed, she glowed even more when she talked about them. So Colin and Claire, you know, as you listen to this later, Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about Geraldine and the way she lived her life and how you two impacted her life. And I know, again, uh, you guys probably know them a little bit better. I spent certainly enough time with them to know and interact and watch that. But those two children are the love of her life, and um, she would do nothing but talk about them on a regular basis every time I spent any time with her at all. There wasn't a single conversation I had with her that didn't have her... I don't want to say gloating, but she was sharing what yeah. was going on in her life with her children. And, you know, she was willing to share her struggles with me mm-hmm. and seek out help and to share what the hard decisions were in addition to how proud she was of mm-hmm. them. And she, you know, she just poured herself in. It, like her whole lifestyle was about to be available for her kids. Right. You know, and right. it was just amazing to me to see the way that she loved them and loved life yeah she really did and um everything about her when you walk into her home her offices or wherever she was it was really all about family and the importance of those children and um so jeff any thoughts as well i mean um love to hear your feelings about your interactions when it came to you know her conversations and her feelings about her children and her family you're absolutely right the kids were a big part of her life I remember taking Stuart to a scout fundraising event, and he got to hear about what we were doing because my wife and I have the boys and scouts. Right. And Stuart just came away to say, oh, this is great. And, and I could tell Geraldine was absolutely thrilled that Colin was going to get a chance to do scouting. And sure enough, he took to it 
and mm-hmm. really, really loved it. So we watched them grow. I, I literally and figuratively over the over the years. And uh, Geraldine, that was priority one for her in all cases, and it was something that you could tell that singular focus. The other thing that you saw with that was her siblings. Mm. You know, it was sort of a balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was that connection of family from both her siblings, from over, you know, all her sisters and brothers down to the kids, where, you know, that was the main thrust of her life. Yeah, and that was wonderful. And as I, I'm doing this, here I am. I'm an idea guy, and I just can't stop. Even though I'm, so I'm thinking, what else can I do for Geraldine? What else? And I'm just thinking, you know, I'm going to take some of these podcasts we did in the past, and I'll circulate them to to her friends and family. You know, I did several with her, and then her and I and uh, Doug Duncan did one or two. And then I'm also thinking, I'm going to see if we produce this podcast, if we could drop some voice, some of her stuff into this particular one, which would be kind of cool. I'm thinking about. Anyway, I, that, this is, I'm just trying to think whatever I could do to allow that lovely lady and her voice and her, mm-hmm. you know, her spirit to live on through this would be, be great. So we'll, we'll work on those things. But before I forget, Lori, also there's a, a GoFundMe page, right? For her. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so we just felt like Geraldine has touched so many people's lives, mm-hmm. you know, financially through her business and stuff. That as an opportunity to give back, we set up a GoFundMe page, and it looks like the kids are going to donate that to the Rotary in her honor. Wonderful. And so we're just encouraging everybody who benefited from her Mm -hmm. to give back for the kids and for the future for her honor. Yeah, and that could be found GoFundMe, obviously, with her name. Yeah, Geraldine Berry. Okay, very good. And if I could, the kids were generous in in asking the donations of the flowers. Be sent to the Rotary Foundation of San Jose, and that's the Rotary Club of San Jose Foundation, the correct name. Okay. I joined that group with about the same time she did. Boy, she lit up the room when she walked in there. It's the ninth largest Rotary Club in Mm. the world. Wow. It's huge, and they do a lot of philanthropic work and Geraldine jumped right into the middle of the service and, and helping people uh, she was part of their rotoplast program of the, you know the polio and on the local level lots of charitable group are in Santa Clara Valley so the, all the money comes in just that foundation goes to fund uh, worthy causes locally and uh, that's why they chose that so I just want to make sure that people understand where that's going and why mm-hmm. Geraldine just so enjoyed that opportunity to help serve. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. You know, the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is the unselfish nature. And what I mean about that is for anybody that's busy, you know, number one, if you're running a business or full-time, most of us are around here, and you have a family and you have other things, right? So that alone occupies majority of your time, resources, and emotional Mm -hmm. capacity, Mm -hmm. right? Right. We all know. We, We do it. But what was amazing to me with Geraldine, too, she managed her time so well, and I have a lot of respect for people like this. You know they're busy as all get up. You know, right? Single parents, raising children, running a business, making life. But it was amazing the amount of time that she spent with charities and other people, family, friends. It was always amazing to me is how much she kind of spread herself and her her spirit around to other people as busy as she was. You know, there was never a time that she didn't ever return a phone call. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you'll leave a message with someone and oh, yeah. you don't hear back for a while. <laughs> <Right>. And, <laughs> you know, Geraldine, it was always like within 10 minutes. And whatever was going on, she'd say, oh, come over here. Let me give you a hug. Or, <laughs> you know, we'd, we'd go over and we would just chit-chat on her back patio with a glass of wine. Mm. And we'd have the Jera therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and she was, it wasn't just the women. I mean, she would do that for anybody that, you know, was having a hard time. She mm-hmm. wanted to open her heart and her house herself yeah. to reach out and help. I mean, that yeah. was just her outpouring, you know. The other thing I'll say, and I'll let Jeff talk a little bit, too, on this, is that the being unselfish like that, I think, you know, for instance, example, I look at admire people like that because sometimes there are days, you guys, and weeks, I'm like, I'm done. I want to go home, and I'm not going to answer any phone calls. As a matter of fact, I might even hide in the backyard for a while because I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> and, you know, I'm always admiring people that have that energy and that extra gear, if you will, yes. for people, not because she saw a need, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, yep. can I do something for you? Maybe you don't sound. Something's going on. Can I help you? And um, I'll tell you, uh, that, that's a gift. Uh, it was a wonderful gift. Jeff, you probably saw a lot of that. 
Absolutely. She was, um, never said no when she was asked to help out with the various projects. And most recently, again, my connections with her were Rotary. And, and then the other great, and, uh, you never saw a prouder mom introducing those kids at the Rotary <laughs> lunches. And she would get in there. And so, in a way, she was communicating a couple of things. One was teaching them how to interact with the community. Mm-hmm. Well, show me. I'm a proud mom with my kids, but at the same time, I'm bringing my kids in here to show them what community they're a part of. Yeah. And uh, not every parent does that in that setting. Now, actually, you bring up a really good point, and this is right along the lines with the love of her children. And all of us know that, uh, that our parents, we love our children very much, but one of the most difficult things to do is this, you know, you could call it tough love, you could call it structure, you could call, and, you know, I haven't been so good at times, you know, sometimes we move in this entitlement where we give our kids and we don't talk a lot about, and Jeff just talked a little bit about, you know, how she would bring them to these events, but she was also very good about letting them know how important this was and giving back to the community and this needs to be part of your life, and that's something I could learn from too because there is something about loving your children and providing them a safe environment to grow and nurture, and that all is wonderful. But, boy, to be a mentor Mm-hmm. Right. And a leader. Mm-hmm. And to, and sometimes to, you know, take a stand and those boundaries and knowing when to show up and be a little tough. Those are important things and not so easy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she had some of those challenges and she stood up, you yep. know, and she pushed through. And I remember, too, you know, I had the most respect for her when she started bringing her kids to SJREI mm-hmm. and putting them to work. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> So now, guess what? I have my kids there, too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm learning from her. You're being the role model as well, right? For sure. Yeah, totally she was a, a good role model. model. Yeah. She was a good role model for women, for people, for business, for children. There's no doubt about that. And, now, you know, let's talk a little bit about that, you guys, too, is um, women, role model for women. In all the progression we've made, maybe in society and business, we still fall short of recognizing women and having them have the same benefits as men in a lot of different aspects of life and business. And she was a heck of a role model, and she took that by the reins. Lori and Jeff, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, as she started SJREI and built that, and what she did was remarkable. Yeah, so Geraldine and I talked about this a lot because it is hard in a male-dominated right. industry mm-hmm. to basically get the door to open. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to somebody today, and I said, you know what? She's a lion chaser. Mm. You know, she not only sees the lion, but she'll chase the lion into the den. And she would fight fiercely to get equality and to be seen as an equal mm-hmm. to any of the guys and. And so she was a role model for us, but she also was a door opener for us. Mm. And she got well, into so. Emin and got on stage into a lot of prominent places. And then not only did she do that, but she would pass the baton. She mm-hmm. would introduce me and other women that are in the leadership roles right. so that we could then take it and lead forward. And so, you know, definite role model. Yeah. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about her business and SJREI and all the people she touched, because we just talked a little bit about, you know, her personal family, the love of her children, uh, of her family in general, her as a person, a role model, how those really, you know, translated into her success in business, which was part of that. And uh, when was it, 04, 05, she started SJREI? It's been around for 17 years. Okay. So I believe 2002. Oh, okay. I might be a little off, but yeah, right around that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is an idea Right? You, yeah. you start, yeah. and you hope it works, and there's a lot of work. Believe me, I know. And there's never any guarantees when you start well, something this, like this. You know, and the thing, Joe, is that this, what she started mm-hmm. existed before Meetup existed. Mm. Right? So That's she a was, good point. She was she had Meetup before, before Meetup. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and what she was looking for, she was looking for community. She mm. was looking to do real estate investing. She mm-hmm. knew that that's what she wanted to do to build some wealth. But she didn't know how, and she wanted to be connected in community. Mm. And so that was the birth of SJREI. Right, right. Not only did she create that, but she elevated it. She went out. She created it as an association. She connected into the National Association and just grew it to be known as a premier real estate association. Right. And an incredible job that she did growing that. That's where I met her, and we talked about it, sort of three of us. 
met, and I can't mm-hmm. imagine how many other hundreds or potentially thousands of people were connected because of that. And so, Jeff, I have a couple more questions for Lori as it relates to SJR, but tell us a little bit about your memories of SJREI and, you know, some of the benefits and some of the growth that you had through that program. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think going back to what Lori was commenting on, I think, and, and you touched on this as well, there's an element here in this, you know, obviously male-dominated industries, and Silicon Valley is no stranger to that problem. And here she steps up in the middle mm-hmm. of it, and she's connecting people. But if you mistake her for just being a social host, which was a role that women have traditionally, since going back to Dolly Madison perhaps, <laughs> uh, you know, have filled, the power is a lot more subtle there. Mm-hmm. And so the connections are coming in. They were genuine. But – she had a, a, a bent to her because she was a study, and she was trying to learn from everybody that mm-hmm. came in that room. And some of the other strong women who came into that organization learned from her. Mm-hmm. I, I could see that over time because they could see her spots. There. She was a little, maybe a little weaker, but they saw her grow stronger and stronger. And I think what happened is it started to attract people to come in because she was so genuine. She was so loving and so honest about what she was trying to do that you started to see people like Doug Duncan and Bruce Norris right. and some of these other, what I consider to be some of the best in the business, making a point to saying, yes, I'll be there for your program where they wouldn't necessarily schedule that. Mm-hmm. So she brought talent and she brought sincerity and she brought that. And those qualities and characteristics stayed with her throughout the entire program. And that's a huge, huge deal that she taught everybody that that was where it was supposed to be. So it was my observation. No, Absolutely. That's great. You know, she builds this business. Lori, I know you got involved early on. You were participating. When was the time or when did you start thinking, gee, you know, maybe I know you guys started having conversations several years ago about how long she wanted to continue to do that and maybe the next transition could be an opportunity for you. Tell us how that all, all evolved and kind of the relationship you guys built into the fact that, the transition took place, and, and you took over SJRI. Well, it actually started a really long time ago because <laughs> um, I was going to some of her meetings yeah, <laughs> way back when. <laughs> she had some meetings in Monterey, which I would go to, and then she had some as far north as Pleasanton. And, and I would go to all these meetings, and I, I finally said to her, you know, I'm tired of driving. Can we have one in Morgan Hill, which is where I live? And okay. she's like, no, I'm already spread too thin. And I said, Geraldine, How about this? How about I start one in Morgan Hill, and I'll refer everybody up to yours, and you come down to mine, and we we kind of do it together, Mm -hmm. you know, just like it's like a satellite of yours. And she says, well, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. You know, she wasn't going to commit. So, you know, I did that. She came, and I did a big presentation on who SJREI was and welcomed everybody to my group. And we had anywhere from 40 to 50 people every month, and then we would feed all those people up into her group. And so we had a very long-running relationship, you know, that (laughs) shut down after 2008, 2009. And so I just kept supporting her in SJREI. And New Year's Eve, about 2013, she calls me up, and I'm getting ready for a party. Like, I'm, I'm like, sweeping and cleaning. And she's like, Lori, I've decided I'm going to sell SJREI. And I'm thinking, okay, I can't talk right now. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, really? And she goes, yeah. She goes, it just hasn't been the same since Jeb left. Mm, and, you know, one of her dear friends passed that, away yeah. pretty suddenly. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm ready for the next chapter in my life. Mm. And she goes, do you know anybody who wants to buy it? <laughs> and I said, no. Of course, my mind wasn't on SJREI. Right. <laughs> my mind was on the food and right. getting the house ready. Right. And I said, no, Jer, I really don't, but, you know, let me give it some thought and get back to you. And I hung up the phone, and I heard this voice inside my head, as audible as it could be, that says, yes, dummy, you know who wants to buy it. You do. (laughs) And I thought, I don't know how am I going to buy a club. How? What? Yeah. I said, okay. So I picked up the phone, and I said, Jer, I think I want to buy it, but I don't know how. I don't know the terms. She goes, great. I'll talk to you after the new year. Happy new year. Click. (laughs) (laughs) Well, see, I mean, it was just that matter of fact done, you know. <laughs> my guess is the smart as she was and as much as she could read people and understand who was committed and who was real and who was ethical and all those things that go along the good character 
My guess is she made that call yeah. thinking that maybe you might be a candidate, right? I suspect that that's what it was about. And it's kind of funny because I even asked her, I said, well, did you talk to Joe? <laughs> <laughs> you know, thinking, you know, you would be a good right. candidate for the club. And she goes, no, I hadn't really thought about that. And, you know, she, it was kind of like she was pondering. You know, and last night I had the chance to talk to Anna Marie, and she was telling me how Jer had some conversations with her, and the two of them had discussed about me being a prospect in taking over the club. So, you know, in hindsight, yes. (laughs) At that point, it was just like one of those thoughts. I go, wait, yeah, I want the club. (laughs) That was great. When did that transition take place, and Um, how did that all come together? Oh, gosh, Jeff probably knows better than I do. (laughs) Was that uh, how many years ago? Was it three or three February, years? Long time ago. Yeah, yeah, February or March of 2014. Okay, so three or four years ago, the four or uh, five, five years, years ago. ago. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so you took over, and was she still involved in for a while, or she how did was. that work? Yeah, she helped transition it. You uh-huh. know, I think it was maybe six months, and then she continued to come for a little while, and then I think she just was ready for her respite. She really yeah. wanted to have time to assess what her next chapter in life mm-hmm. was. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Jeff, I mean, uh, that, a lot of history there as well, and uh, during that transition, and she, like most people, there were so many connections through that. It's amazing to me the amount of friends. I mean, last night's service, we talked a little bit about it. It was amazing. The place was packed. As a matter of fact, I think there was probably wasn't enough room for everybody to sit tonight. I'm guessing is going to be the same. And for a person who, you know, came to the United States with very little money, right? Yeah. And no education, if I remember right. Right. I mean, she educated herself. How to tell, talk a little bit about that. So I think it was like she came over with a suitcase and $500. Yep. She was in cosmopology, and she w- ended up putting herself through um, UC mm-hmm. and got a degree in entrepreneurship business. Yeah. You know, and I think she could have done it without the degree, but, you know, she set herself up well with yeah. that, that right. knowledge. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, she had her friend Kathy, who's in school right now at USC, talking about that last night and, you know, just reflecting on how she had gone through USC and how she was taking the program. And, yeah, you know, this is, again, classic Geraldine. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew this was a challenge for her, and she knew that it was something she wanted to do. She was always pushing the envelope, and mostly her envelope. She was <laughs> getting out of her comfort zone an mm-hmm. awful lot, and... Those of us, and you two know very well, that her comfort zone was what it was and what it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so to see her up there, most of the world saw her just up there, big, strong, and bringing things together. But she shared with us you know, some of those times where she felt, eh, am I doing this right? She was always seemed to be checking in and trying to make sure. One thing that always struck me was if in that business of putting together seminars, you're constantly getting people who want to get up on stage. And there's no shortage of people who want stage time and want to come in. And I remember a couple people came in who had been on the circuit, so to speak. And, boy, the minute she realized they were not the right person for her program, boy, they heard about it, and that was it. So she was no holds barred to jump in and take care and correct something because she really was trying to add integrity to that program and to the whole business, frankly. Uh, She was very concerned about it. So I think in the combination of the, you know, again, legitimizing her degree and her mm-hmm. entrepreneurship with that was part of making sure that everything was legitimate, everything mm-hmm. had credibility and integrity. Yeah. Yeah, well said, Jeff. You know, the other thing is I think that I want to recognize is that, and this is a difficult thing in life, especially in this valley, I, I struggle with it, is, you know, how long do you go 110 miles an hour? How long do you go with the gas pedal to the metal? <laughs> And I am not one to talk about this because I haven't really mastered that yet. I'm not close. But I think about it all the time the last couple of years. My point I'm getting at is I admired her for saying, okay, this is the next phase of my life. Mm -hmm. As a fairly young person still, she worked really hard building that company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I still think about that. And I admire people that say, you know what, I made my run and there's more to life. And I'm going to explore some other things, and I'm going to spend some more time with my family, which she did. She took some big trips. I really admire that. For um, sure. You know? You yeah. know, any of us that are entrepreneurs understand that right. when you build a business, it's just like raising a child. Yeah. It right. truly is. And for her to essentially send that child off to college and mm-hmm. let it, you know, live its own life is what she did. And she right. was ready to go on to the next stage, and she did it well. Yeah, and I admire that. Jeff, I mean, you too. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. You've been working your entire life. 
we all talk about balance, right? We read books and we do all this stuff. But, you know, I'll be the first one to admit, you know, I, that's a tough one for me. I feel like at times, you know, I, <laughs> it's hard to even relax because you think you have to be doing something, reading another book, getting up on the next business thing. It could be a crazy, just a crazy roller coaster. And um, so I, I look back, and again, I, that's one of the things I really admire about her. I remember having a long conversation with her about that. And I was asking, you know, how did you do this? Why did you do it? And she really said that. She said, you know, I've had a run, and it's time, and I need to do some other things, and I want to spend much more time with my children and my family and travel. And it's just great. I, that was, I remember one of those conversations we had. Yeah, I remember also you know, my last conversation with her was kind of indicative of that. I, she had joined a committee, and we were doing everything by conference calls. And so once a week we have a conference call. All of a sudden there's that voice coming in, and, oh, we have a new <laughs> member on our committee. And I, great, I said, because so that's what we do, the San Jose Rotary Fireworks Program. Wow. And she came in to help Mary Beth, one of our members, with the organizing of a VIP party that we do in conjunction with the fireworks show. And it's part of the fundraising effort. And Chair was just volunteering for this, volunteering for that. I'll take care of this. And a couple of people turned to me and go, she for real? Mm -hmm. I said, she's for real. Right. And then, and then <laughs> almost as quickly uh, said, jara has got a new job. She's going to have to step off the committee, but she's going to offer to help. And I, so I called her up. I said, what's this job? And she was so excited. And I wanted to find out more about her job, but mm -hmm. she stopped. And what got me was she said, how are you doing? How are your kids? What are you up to? Are you doing the best thing in your life? Are you sure you want to be doing what you're doing? And she started challenging me and making sure that I was doing okay. And that was really struck me that I'd called her to find out how she was doing and she was checking in on me. Yeah. And that was, you know, Jer's classic way of always finding out how you were doing. Don't you feel, and I know I do, because at my age, you got to be more transparent, because what, what the hell do you just need to, <laughs> right? So I, I just think to myself, you know, sometimes I feel so selfish watching a person like that. Like, mm -hmm. God, Joe, you could do more. Like, you could, you know, I mean, that's the effect it has on me. Well, definitely, definitely <laughs> a role model to live up to, because, yeah. you know, I'm the same way. It's like right. I think, okay, she got all of that done, and, right. and I'm only here. And how, how did she do that? <laughs> <laughs> but her thoughtfulness and her desire to help other people and always ask about them, too. Mm -hmm. Again, in a, and it's very easy. We live in a really a selfish kind of environment, especially this area. It's easy to get caught up in. And we all forget that it is amazing how it feels when you do something good for someone or you spend some time for someone, you feel like you have an impact on yes. them. Right? Yes. Yes. You know, and that's one of the things, you know, one of my life goals is that I will have touched so many people's mm. lives that when I'm gone, my kids will want for no need, mm. right? Mm. My girlfriend and I were reflecting over Jer's life. Well, she did that. Mm. I, I don't know that that was even a goal for her, right. but her kids right. will want for no need ever because of the amount of people that she's impacted. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing to me. Yeah. Well said. I, you know, I'd like to take a minute or so now in this podcast to speak directly to Geraldine's beautiful children, Colin and Claire. Just know when you listen to this and when you talk to other people, your mother was a wonderful, loving, caring woman that um, was a role model, was, was an inspiration for not only women but people in general for business. Her energy was infectious. She had this ability to bring people together. She had this ability to give people energy, give them hope, and she was always looking out and wondering what was going on in the next person and people she cared about her life. So just understand that that was your mother. I know you know this, but it's really important. I know, Lori and Jeff, you feel the same. It's important, even though your children and the family that love you know this, it's important that you know that the people she touched and her friends the way we felt as well. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. think you could have said it any better. Yeah, Absolutely. Do you guys have any um, any final thoughts or, or anything, any messages you'd like to give to those listening to the podcast or anything at all about Geraldine? I mean, this has been wonderful in general, and we'll do as much as we can, of course. I think the only thing is just remember to live true to yourself. And I think that's what Jared did is she lived mm -hmm. true to her heart. Right. You know, no matter what she did, it was always passionate. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, her kids and her life and her, you know, her energy, everything was authentic and passionate. And I think that that's what we need to take from this yeah. and go out and spread that love to the other people that mm -hmm. are lonely, that need it. 
Yeah, yeah, well said. Any final thoughts, Jeff? Well, I know that uh, one inspiration that she gave, she uh, caused my wife to go do some digging, and sure enough, we came up with a tracking that I am, in fact, part Irish, it turned out. So, wow, look uh, at that. Uh, was that, that good that or bad? It, that was good. I mean, after, well, after care, that was an inspiration. <laughs> they made me feel, okay, it must be good. But, you know, really, to, to Claire and, and to Colin, you have more friends than you realize and more support. And it's there for you. And don't let it smother you. Just know it's there. And, you know, to her sisters, who if they get a chance, and mm. her brothers, to see it. What a great family. She Beautiful. loved you. And um, she spoke so highly mm. of all of you. And I were constantly getting words from, and I know this is very true of uh, both of you, people that come to us because they know we were involved in this in terms of knowing her. And so many people have expressed their love of Jer and their, mm-hmm. and her gratitude for all she did mm-hmm. for us. And I just want to pass that along that she was well loved by many, many, many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. She was, sure was. I got many responses to the news, just little snippets mm-hmm. of how she impacted the people's lives. And it just, I think it's important for, for everybody of her family to know that, you know, she was a light mm-hmm. and she loved them. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. She made an impact on a lot of people, and um, that, that's life well lived, and she certainly did that for sure. Well, Jeff, thank you for your time and, and your memories and your, your contributions and your friendship, and Lori, the same with Geraldine. Thank you guys mm-hmm. for participating in this podcast. And, Joe, thank you for putting this together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Joe, You're thank welcome. you very much. My pleasure. I wish I could do more, and I'll continue to try. As an inspiration, actually, of Geraldine, that's one of the things, you know, what what else can we continue to do for more people, right? What would Geraldine do? That's right. <laughs> that's, don't put, that's a lot of pressure to put on me more. <laughs> yeah, All right, I'll you guys. You. Thank you again, Joe, for yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Care, Thank you guys both very much. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are watching us on Facebook. Hopefully um, you were able to pick this up and and listen to this wonderful memory and dedication to Geraldine Berry. For those that download the podcast later and listen to the podcast, I hope again that you spread the word. And uh, if you have this podcast, you know someone that knew Geraldine, please pass it along and let them listen to it. Uh, family members will certainly do the same and it is in memory and dedication to her, Geraldine Berry. So thank you again. Take care. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit RERadioLive.com. That's RERadioLive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at RERadioLive.com.